What we've done so far is identify the notes or the lines um, that are in the stave, in the treble, and in the bass. Remember, in the earlier stage, I said what we did, we had a line in between, we rubbed that out, and pushed it apart for the hymn book. What we also did is we took a section from the whole of the keyboard, just a section. So you've got bits on both sides. For example, down here, it's not represented on these lines, and up here, it's too high to fit on these lines. What we've got is the E line here, that's the first line in the treble clef, G, B, D, F. All right, so those are all your lines, and this is exactly where they are. This is for that. That's for that, and so on. Right, and the D here, and the F, there we are, the F is there. Likewise for the bass, we've got a G here. Okay, so the keyboard here um, corresponds with the stave or the staff here. So, what we did say is that you've got your G, B, that's the bass clef, D, F, A, and then you've got your E, G, B, D, F. Right, can you see that here? Right, let's see if you can do that here. Right, that's what the stave is. These are the lines. I'm pressing the lines. Okay, imagine these are lines. What we've missed out is something in the middle. There's your E there, the, the bottom of the treble clef, and there's your A, the top of the bass clef. We've missed out a line here, and this is the line here, okay? But remember we've spaced it out. So you can also represent this line here. It's the same line, but if you're coming down from the bass clef, from the treble clef, you'll put it closer to the treble clef. And if you're going from the bass clef, it's one line, but if you're going closer, it's easier to read it and more consistent with the font and the spacing if you put it close, closer to the clef you're dealing with because they've pushed it apart, okay? Now, what we call a note that's outside of the stave, we call it a note on a ledger line because you put a line just for the particular note that jumps outside, okay? So, if you're going, let's look at this here. Remember, I'm going to take from the bass clef G, a space, B line, C space, D line, E space, F space, S line, sorry, F line, G space, A line. We did say you can keep on going. The next thing above this line is a space. All right, so if I can take the blue, if we follow the logic of the musical alphabet, that's a B. If there was a line up here, all right, we'll just put a little one here, what would that line be? If you had a note in that line, what would it be? It would be a C, because you're going up in the alphabet. Let me use black for that. That would be a C. And then the next space above that would be a D. You see how the alphabet is going? And then if we put another line, the next line above that would be an E. And I need to use the black here. What we've just done, we've, met, we've joined together the A line with the E. That E here is this one here. Remember, we pushed it apart. So when you put a note above it, you now have to understand the invisible line in between, or at least the line is just identifying where the note is. If you're really slow to it, just count up, you know the top line, and just go from line to space to line, and you can work out what it is. Same principle. In the alphabet, if you're going up, it's going up in the alphabet, A, B, C, D, E. If you're going down, it's going down in the alphabet. So G, F, uh, can I finish this, F, E, D, and so on, C, all right? Um, so, here we are, here we have it. Let's work out this one here. A is the top line, but this is above it. This is one line above it. So we go to the space, it's B. We go to the next line, it's C. Use the same principle, even if it's up here. Even if it's way down here. Even if what they do sometimes is put notes below here to go into this clef, but they don't put it in this clef. They keep it here because they want your right hand to play. Normally your right hand plays the treble clef and your left hand plays what's on the bass clef. Okay? So let's work it out the other way now. We're actually going to go into the bass clef, but we're going to use the treble clef to do it, if you understand my meaning. Right. I'm going to use this here. Right. Now let me use one in between. So I'm going to put an E here, which is 
I'm going to put it as a minimum, I think. All right, we'll touch on that in a second. And then I'm going to put something here. I've got one line there, two lines there, and how about the space below that? Okay, so this is what I've got. This is a legitimate note because it's, it's in a space and you've got a line here. We know this is E, okay? It's the circles we're focusing on. Even though this one is colored in, still a circle. Remember, we talked about that before. Okay, so that's the E line on the treble clef. Now we need to find out what that is. E, now we're counting down now, it's gonna, we have to go backwards. What comes before E in the alphabet would be the next space. D, D the space is in blue. What would be the next line then? C. All right, now we get into middle C. I'm gonna put that there. What would be the next space below that? B. B, we're just going backwards, right? We're nearly there. What's the next line? A, yeah, we'll do A here. And so, the next one down will be this note. What would it be? That's the next space. If, it's, if that's an A, what would that be going backwards? And you've got your G. alphabet here. G, yeah, because you start again, don't you? Right, so G. This is a G. You've got to play an E and a G, it's saying. And so let's bring that here. It's saying you must play this E and this, that's an A. principle. First you identify where the circles are. Are they on a space? Are they on a line? And what clef are they on? All right. Once you know what clef you're on, and then if, you, if they're in a space or in a line, you know what principles to use. If you're on a treble clef, you use, what was that one? Eat good bread, dear father. All right. So if you're in a treble clef, eat good bread, dear father. What we some of us grew up with every good boy deserves favour or every good boy deserves football. And you identify what line or what space you want. Likewise, F, A, C, E. So in number 15, we have something on the second lineup. That's the top one. This is where your melody will come in the hymn book. Your melody is always in the hymn book on the top. The highest note is your tune. And then the other notes are your harmony, the supporting notes to make it sound even richer. We have one in the second line, which we've identified as G. You agree with me? Yeah. Every good. That's the second line. It's running right through. Then we have our um, one underneath there, which is on the first line. We know that's eat, good bread, or every good. Eat is on that first one. So they're saying, I want you to sing my to a G and an E. So two people are going to sing that. And then that's the ladies normally, or high men. And then the, the lower... Ladies and the men will sing down here. We've got one on the ledger line, which is one above. We know the top line is A. The next space would be B, and then the next one would be C. So that's C, and that's middle C. Middle C always looks like this. Okay, That's your London Underground sign, like that. And like I said, you can either have it higher up or lower down. It doesn't matter. It's the same one. As long as there's just one line below or above the stave, that's the C. That's middle C. And then you've got one down here, which is a lower C. All cows eat grass, all cows is on the C space. So what they've told us to do is to press down at the same time, because it's vertical. It's the next thing that we do. When you put notes down like this, you're saying you play all of those at the same time. You've got to play a G, a E, a middle C, and a lower C at the same time. Does that make sense? So that's the initial point in reading music.